Hello, everyone. My guest today is Nicholas Colster. He's a serial entrepreneur and founder of Finland's first VoIP company. He worked with data science and algorithms for 10 years in e-commerce and large enterprises and a startup that was acquired by Facebook. He realized that algorithms were rarely the problem, but data silos and were the real problem and set out to solve that problem with Windsor.ai. Will you, uh, uh, Nicholas, you ready to take us to the top? Uh, yes. Okay. So Let's what go. year? tell us what year you launched Windsor. Uh, we launched in 2017. Uh, we we started started working with uh, enterprise customers, started to solve this uh, this data silo problem for them, and, and uh, yeah, have been going since then. When you say enterprise customers, I mean what was the size of your first deal that you closed? Do you remember? Uh, the size of the first deal it was uh, it was maybe uh, twenty thousand or so. How did you do that? I mean that's rare to launch and go from zero to your first customers a twenty thousand dollar deal. Uh, yeah, we started. Uh, that was uh, we started very very enterprise type sales, so that we started started contacting contacting uh, companies quite a lot. We did uh, we did a lot of sales uh, back then. We we met met so many different uh, so many different companies, decision makers, and and uh, yeah, then we found uh, found some very happy some very happy happy uh, customers that that uh, trusted in us. Of course, there was uh, there was quite a lot <laughs> quite a lot of work to do there. But, now, yeah. fast fast forward to today, are you still selling? On average, your plan size is twenty thousand dollars per year. Uh, no, that has been a big change that we have been doing. So that we have uh, we have been really really automating automating the product, making it more, much more self service. And uh, I think it was uh, maybe eighteen months ago that we started to really really focus on making the product more self-service, uh, much more low touch, uh, because uh, that, that, that seemed to us to be, to be like the way to, to grow, to really, uh, really separate, separate like the, the custom work from, from the growth and, and so on. And, and uh, yeah, I think there is some interview with uh, Jason Lemkin where he says that it's much easier to move up market more towards enterprise than to move down market. And, and yeah, yeah, we noticed that. <laughs> it's always it's always greener on the other side. Every SM, everyone <laughs> listening right now with a $40 average ARPU wants to have a $40,000 average ARPU. Everyone that's enterprise <laughs> wants a bigger top of funnel, wants to move downstream. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, yeah. What's the, so what's the average customer paying you now per day? I mean, per, per month. Uh, per month, it's, it's around 1,000. Right. Okay. Thousand. So you've come, you've come downstream a little bit. Um, now, have you done all this bootstrapped or did you raise capital? Uh, we are bootstrapped. And uh, yeah, we have been profitable from the start and are, are still quite profitable. So. Who's we? Do you have co-founders? Uh, yeah, I, have, I have two, uh, two founders that, that joined quite, quite early on. And how did you think about the equity split between the three of you? That's always challenging early on. Yeah, yeah, but it was uh, it was me who started uh, started and was really the driver. So so it was quite quite straightforward in that sense. So do you still own more than call it ninety yeah. percent of the business? Uh, not more than ninety, but uh, but uh, a majority. Yeah. Okay, got it. Cool. So maybe more than seventy or eighty percent. Your two co-founders own some. Is there a stock option pool for employees? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we have really tried so that everyone everyone who who has been with the company for a while. Is, is also an owner. And we tell really us, how you, believe tell us how you set that up. That sometimes people don't understand how to set that up. Uh, yeah, that, we, have, we have a stock option pool that, uh, that everyone who has been with the company can join. And, and, and when they have been with us for, for six months or so, then they, can, then they automatically become part of it. And how many people are on the team today? Uh, we are 10 people today. 10 people. How many engineers? Uh, nine. <laughs> oh wow! It's almost all engineers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, almost everyone, almost everyone in the company can write uh, SQL and so on. We believe that's quite important. But of course, now it becomes much more important to also focus on marketing and, and so on. Of course. Now, how many customers are you serving today? Uh, today, it's uh, it's uh, six, 50, 60 around that range. F- fifty or sixty. Okay. So, I mean, can I can I take fifty five? Right times a thousand dollar ARPU, you're doing about fifty thousand dollars per month. Um, yeah, it's it's in that ballpark. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And when you go back a year from today, what was monthly recurring revenue? It was. Um, I think it was. It was around forty. 
Okay. Of 40. Yeah. So how, yeah, was, how, did yeah. You, how did you get, how did you get that growth? Is it coming from adding new customers or expanding old customers? It, it's both. It's both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's coming from both, but again, it, a lot of this is happening in the product because you don't have a sales team. So it's all, it's all inside yeah. the product, right? Yeah. True. True. Now you've done a great job setting up your pricing page at winsor.ai forward slash pricing. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of paywalls users can hit, right? Based off the usage, the utility value. So number of reports, number of users, data source connectors, destinations, number of rows, which one of these sort of number based upsells has been the most effective for you? Which one do people use the most? Yeah, it's still, it's still many times a little bit uh, a discussion when, when companies upgrade. Uh, but but like the, da- the number of data sources, uh, the data volume, and uh, and so on. That's and also a little bit how much support is is needed. Uh, th- mm-hmm. These are the drivers. Are you doing any upsells for setup setup fees? Uh, no, no, we're, we're not doing that. <coughs> but, so but, that. Yeah, yeah. Any plans to raise capital? Um, not right now, not right now. I mean, we have been, uh, we have uh, been uh, receiving quite a lot of inbound VC, uh, VC contacts, but but uh, we have not yet seen the case. But maybe it comes someday. Well, what what in, what inbound for you from a VC was the most exciting? Did they name a valuation? Uh, no, we didn't go that far in the, <laughs> in the discussions. <laughs> what did they say? Um. Yeah, qu- quite many have been have been in, in like interested in the space and uh, and so on. But maybe there is some some correlation between some of our competitors raising capital and the activities increasing there. <laughs> I'm not sure. Who are some of your competitors that have raised? <laughs> uh, it would uh, yeah, it would probably be be of course like uh, uh, Funnel.io and and uh, maybe also Rockerbox because we also do the attribution modeling. What box? Uh, uh, rocker box could could be one from the US. Uh, rocker rocker the, box. Yeah, yeah. Because we also do the multi-touch attribution modeling. We we don't only do the data integration. So this like the attribution modeling has been quite an important uh, part for, for our customers also. So so you're doing about seven hundred thousand dollars, sixty six hundred thousand dollars per year right now in terms of your annual run rate. If someone came and offered you, you know. 10 million all cash up front today to sell the business would you sell um not sure not sure would would have to discuss of course also also in the in the team and so on but yeah definitely would think about it yeah what sorts of things would you need to think about like the yeah would have to discuss uh, would have to discuss a little bit uh like what are what, what's the vision and and these kind of things very cool all right what's the next on pr- uh, product roadmap what are you, what are you guys releasing next <laughs> We yeah we uh, we have been focusing so much on the UX uh, improving improving the UX the onboarding and and now next we are going to to improve the whole all the features around predicting revenue predicting success for the campaigns and these kind of things so mm-hmm. these these are quite important and at the same time making integrating different data sources easier uh, yeah. so that it becomes easier to also add CRM data into the uh, into the whole uh, data stream and so on. Are you tracking churn at all, Nicholas? Uh, not so much. Of course, we we get very sad when we lose a customer, but it has not been happening so much. Um, maybe like one or two customers per month or so. Okay, and how much revenue do they usually represent? Uh, it it varies. It varies. Uh, many times they are small. Um, okay. Got it. All right, and and do you have real expansion revenue? Upselling, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, so, some customers have been upgrading uh, a lot, and also mm-hmm. expanding to different teams in the company and so on. Mm-hmm. So that has been that has been quite uh, quite good. Uh, maybe 10, 20 percent or so. Okay, very cool, Nick. That's good stuff, man. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Um, yeah, it would. I would probably mention this. This creative selection—it's—it's it's a little bit unknown, unknown book, but it—it it, uh, describes uh, Apple's how they how they develop the iPhone and all the challenges, all the different engineering problems they had to solve. It's really fascinating. Creative selection inside Apple's design process during the golden age of Steve Jobs. Yeah. yeah. All right. Number two—is there a CEO you're following or studying? 
Mm, I'm not following any, any particular CEO. I'm trying to pick up things from here and there as much as possible. <laughs> Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Windsor? Uh, I would actually have to say that it's a Discord. We, we rely quite a lot on Discord, the chat, <laughs> chat tool. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Eight. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? I'm mar married with, uh, with two kids. Two kids. How old are you? Uh, I'm 42. 42. Last question. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? <laughs> uh, this is f first when I thought about this, it's, it's very, it's very uh, easy to, to not come up with anything. But I think the stuff from, from Y Combinator, especially from Sam, Sam Altman and Paul Graham, that's really good to just focus on, on talking to, to users and building the product. <laughs> Guys, Windsor.ai marketing attribution. They bootstrapped, launched in 2017, just broke $55,000 per month in revenue with their team of 10. Again, completely bootstrapped, 56 customers, $12,000 average ACV as they look to continue to scale. Nicholas, thanks for taking us to the top. And thanks for having me. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares backend dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.